Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the model railway news. Here we are in April and as there always is, there is a ton of news today, so kick back, relax, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get cracking with Hornby. And to start with, there's some sort of bad news with Hornby because the old pre-order cancellation trend has still been going on, unfortunately. And I too have had quite a lot cancelled this time around. So I have the original condition Hush Hush, that one was cancelled, unfortunately. The rebuilt Hush Hush had that one cancelled, and also the Gangway Luggage Bogey Van had that one cancelled as well. I had each of these models pre-ordered with Hattons, who have said they just didn't get the number of units they requested. Now, it's really, really annoying, but I, I get it. You know, a retailer will be allocated a certain number of models, and they can't sell more than that. However, this time around and over this last few months, it seems like there have been an awful lot of pre-orders cancelled. If you look at the forums online, you can see tons of people complaining that they've had orders cancelled. And I personally have received comments. I've had tons of emails. There's even been some tweets this morning about people who have had their pre-orders cancelled. Now, look, I don't know what's happened. I don't have the details. I'm not on the inside. But what I can say is that I've been to Hatton's, I've seen the people that run it, I've seen their systems. I don't believe they are the sort of company that would take pre-orders without having good faith that they were able to fulfil them. And why would they do that? Why would they take orders if they didn't 100% think they would fulfil them? They don't get any money from these pre-orders until the, 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 the sort of product comes into stock. So it's, all this does is really annoy their customers, they'll lose customers over this. It's not something they would do deliberately. So I reckon they must have been allocated much less than they expected, and also at quite short notice as well. These Hush Hush locos have been pre-ordered for absolutely ages. Why are they only finding out now that they're not going to get what they expected? The really, really annoying part is, though, that each of these models is still available on Hornby.com to order for the full price. So there it is, the original Hush Hush, that's the very one I had pre-ordered that was cancelled. Still available to pre-order from Hornby, but at £20 more than I was going to pay at Hatton's. There's the rebuilt Hush Hush, still available to pre-order from Hornby. Again, £20 more than I was going to pay at Hatton's. And there it is, the, the, the luggage bogey van that I was so excited about. Still available to pre-order from Hornby.com at £3 more. So this suggests that the availability for such models is there, it just doesn't seem to be there for retailers such as Hattons or anybody else that may be affected. And having said that, look at this. I mean, you can take any retailer you like, the Hush Hush is literally sold out. You just can't get it anywhere except Hornby.com. So does this mean Hornby are trying to encourage people away from the retailers and to buy from Hornby.com instead? I don't like the sound of that because they charge the RRP, which means they'll be making the profit that the retailers would be making, as well as Hornby's own profit. And they've also got the extra money coming in from selling at RRP. So this is not a great thing for the customer, is it? I don't know whether it's just Hattons affected or other retailers as well. But what I do know is that a lot of customers are being left disappointed, me included, this time. I mean, we thought that these models were secure over a year ago. We had the pre-orders in. Now, just before release, we're finding out that they're not secure and that, in fact, if we want the models, we're going to have to pay more and order direct from Hornby.com. It's not a good situation at all. So, I mean, if you're concerned about this or if you're affected by this, I would contact Hornby. I'll include an email address down in the description because I'd really like to know what's going on. I want to know who's to blame and how we can stop this happening in the future. On a slightly more positive note, there are still new models coming through at Hornby, which is good. The Merchant Navy, in original condition, came into stock over the last month, and they are absolutely incredible models. I managed to get one of these, amazingly, and they really were very, very good. So if you're interested in checking out that review, I will post a link to it up there. They've also got the A2-3 in stock now. Uh, they've got the BR Greens, as you can see, and the LNER Greens. I wonder if they've sorted out the BR Green yet, because most people agreed that the the A22 BR Green was definitely not right. So I'd be really, really interested to see whether there's any difference in the livery there. But the A2 slash 3 is in stock. 
There are quite a few interesting updates on Hornby's Engine Shed blog as well, with reference to new models set to come out. I have shown the progress of the APTP in the past, but there's another major update here, as you can see. It is, in fact, an early decorated sample. Now, Hornby do say on the blog that there are still some minor improvements to be made to the decoration, but what is clear just from these pictures is the quality of the finish, a huge step up from the older Hornby APT that I've seen in the past. Back in February, Hornby showed us some really quite primitive CADs of their upcoming Class 9F locomotive. Well, this month there is a considerable update to that as well. So look at these. Now these do look like samples, but they're actually not. These are renders, but as you can see, they're much more advanced renders. There's a lot more detail present on these, and they actually give a much, much better idea of what these models are going to look like. Not only that, there is actually a sample on display now. Now the sample doesn't look quite as good as the renders because it's a very early sample. It's 3D printed, in fact, and apparently they just do this to check the overall proportions of the body in physical form as opposed to looking at it on a computer screen because you can get a better idea I, I suppose of uh, how the model is actually looking so quite handy to have a physical copy of the loco and it is looking pretty decent it's clearly a 9f can't wait to see how this model develops and finally not that we're going to get hush hushes by the sounds of it but there are some samples of the hush hush in the photographic gray livery uh, which I, I think they did say is a fictitious livery funnily enough but of course not anymore, it is now a real livery thanks to Hornby, at least in 00 scale, and it looks fantastic as well. I, if, I, if I thought I would be able to get one of those, I might even be tempted to pre-order one because I do love me some great liveries. At long last, there is a major announcement from Rapido Trains. Now, last month I talked about their announcement of an announcement, which they made on April 1st, but this month they've actually made their announcement, so I can talk about their announcement rather than just their announcement for the announcement that I talked about last month, if you're still following. So they have confirmed that this is not just an April Fool's prank, as a lot of us thought it was. They've confirmed that a range of Titfield Thunderbolt models are on the way. And those are going to be including, of course, the Locomotive Lion, or Thunderbolt, as it was known in the film. So that is what everybody expected them to do, and sure enough, that is exactly what they've announced. They've also got a whole range of other models from the film as well, which is very, very cool. So they've got this, the Buffet Car number 8, which looks pretty good. I do remember seeing that one. They've got the Toad Brake Van, which also appeared in the film. Dan's House, and obviously this is something that comes right out of the film. It is it's basically a coach body, I think, on a low loader wagon. I do remember seeing that in the film and being quite amused by it. It looks as though we're actually going to be getting that in model form, which is amazing. They've also got Pierce and Crump's coach, and all of these models are going to be available in three different packs containing different combinations of the various models. And there's actually tons of material in Rapido's newsletter, so if you want to learn more about these wagons and the locomotive, of course, do check out their website. At the moment, there's no price or anything talked about, and the features of the various models are still under wraps, but hopefully we'll hear more about those soon. The newsletter also talks about their motivation for announcing the models at this time. Now, Studio Canal, who owned the rights to the film, apparently informed Rapido Trains that another party had tried to acquire the rights to produce the Titfield Thunderbolt models and was turned down because Rapido already had those rights. The following Monday, Hornby announced their lion. Now this is strange because before we had this information, Hornby had told us that they made their premature announcement because of a leak. Uh, well, it, it, it was, um, I had a, um, I was told that, that our, um, it would be leaked, that we, somebody had picked up on the fact that we were producing lion. Uh, and um, with, um, uh so i've come really it's sort of been a bit of a um uh well i'm not sure what i can say really so i've just brought it forward a bit because i didn't i want i didn't really want it to leak out yikes i mean it, it wasn't the most coherent interview in the world was it we'll put it that way um so if i if i've understood this correctly Hornby didn't announce Lion because presumably they found out another manufacturer acquired the rights to do so. They announced it because there was a leak and they didn't want that leak to get out. I wasn't, I, I, I must have missed the leak, but uh, if anybody, if you guys heard about this, 
comment down below and uh, I'd be very interested to know where this leak came from and where it was posted because I tend to look out for that sort of thing and I did not see it. Little bit of an update from KR Models then, you'll all know about this but I want to talk about it because it was quite exciting. The GT3 gas turbine has now arrived in the UK. It arrived sort of in America or something a long time ago. It doesn't matter. They are now here. And I did do a review of it, as you can see here. The thing was actually a lot better than I expected it to be. It wasn't perfect by any means, but at the end of the day, it's a decent looking locomotive, which did run well after some minor modifications. So KR Models, I think, gets a thumbs up for a first locomotive. Overall, it's a really, really good job, and that means that I will feel confident to pre-order and order the other models that KR Models have announced. I'm saying the word model quite a lot today. I guess that's to be expected. So those of you who were wanting to see what KR Models sort of manufacturing techniques, what their quality was like before ordering, I guess you folks now have a bit better idea of uh, what to expect. So yeah, really, really looking forward now to seeing what KR Models can do in the future. Next up then, a little bit of an update from Hattons, and it's slightly more positive than everything getting cancelled, which is good. So last month, we were all, I think, very, very impressed with those Genesis Great Western decorated samples that they showed off. Well, last month we'd seen nothing because there are now tons of samples on display from Hattons. Here are just a few of them. We've got the LBSC Maroon. Again, just the fact that this is decorated very nicely as well, by the way, shows off some of those details, doesn't it? Look at the ends, for example. Look at all the separately fitted parts. Then there's the Southern Green. Now, I didn't expect this to be one of my favourites, but I actually think it is. Look at the richness of the colour there, particularly the yellow paint, which contrasts so nicely with the green. That one is really, really cool. Uh, there's the SECR as well. Look at this livery. What a crazy livery this is. There is a real richness in the colour on these samples that the 3D renders and the other pictures that we've seen in the past just did not capture. I think seeing the physical models is a real step up there. And Hattons have shown a whole range of other decorated Genesis coaches from batch one, and every single one of them looks fantastic. So if you're interested in these or you'd like to look in a bit more detail, I will include affiliate links down in the description. I have ordered quite a lot of these models, so to think that I might actually be able to get some of them and to look at them on my channel is fantastic. So yeah, fingers crossed they don't take too long to release, and hopefully they'll be as good as they look. Back in 2020, I talked about the newly announced Planet Industrial's Care Stewart Victory locomotive, which had been announced. And you know how slow the production of models is these days. I didn't expect to have a substantial update on that model for a good long time. Well, how wrong I was, because Planet Industrials have revealed this engineering prototype for the Care Stewart Victory locomotive. So on the one hand, the pace of this project is really quite impressive. Not long, really, since it was announced, and already they've got some pretty advanced looking engineering prototypes. On the second hand, you can see there is quite a lot more detail visible on these samples, which allows us to see that the model will have a die-cast boiler, die-cast smoke box, die-cast chassis. It looks like a proper copper chimney top as well, doesn't it? Cast wheels, and also, even at this stage, plenty of separately fitted parts. So that really does give you some idea of what this model will be like, and also the quality that we can expect. There's quite a lot of die-cast on there, and at the moment they are taking pre-orders for just £115 on that model, which is £15 off I believe so yeah check out their website it's a touch more reasonable like I say you save £15 if you pre-order I've done it if you fancy one of these Care Stewart Victory Locos maybe you should as well because they are looking really really good hopefully decorated samples will be the next major milestone and that I'm really looking forward to Next up, a little bit of an update from Ellis Clark Trains. They emailed me about this one to say that they have decorated samples for their O-Gage press float wagons. And look at this, I was actually quite impressed by the sheer number of different variations that they've got on offer on their website. I tried to count how many different ones there were, but I gave up in the end because there, there were so many subtle differences on them. Anyway, the release is supposed to be summer 2021. It has been pushed back a little bit just to get everything right. But actually, they do look fantastic. So my question, my poll for today, should I get one? Do you enjoy the O-Gage wagon reviews? Because while Dapol is fantastic in O-Gage, it would be quite nice to see what other manufacturers like Helgen, like I did the other week, are up to in O-Gage. So yeah, do let me know. 
Let's finish off then with some poll results. I've been a bit lazy with the polls this month. I think I've only done two that are worthy of note. So remind me, remind me to, to set more polls. First of all, I did a Great Western running session, which I really enjoyed filming, by the way. I got all my Great Western locos out. I ran just six of my favourites, though, and I asked you guys to pick which one was your favourite. And as you can see, they were all deeply unpopular, except for one locomotive, and that was the City of Truro, who got almost 60% of the votes, 58% there. Now, I would say I was surprised at that result, but come on, we all know how popular the City of Truro is. But this poll shows just how true that is. And then finally, I did my first ever Helgen O-Gage review. I took a look at their O5 shunter. And again, while there were one or two quality issues with it, overall, I was quite impressed. And I asked you folks, as I often do, to rate the Loco out of five. And as you can see, here is your response. It averages out at 7.6 out of 10 for the user score, which is only 0.25 higher than the score I gave it. It always amazes me how close your score always is to mine. It's quite incredible. Anyway, that is the end of the Model Railway news. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, if there was news that I didn't talk about in this video that you feel I should have done, do comment down below. And obviously, check out the description for affiliate links if you want to pick up any of the stuff I've talked about or those that I can get links for. Thank you very, very much for watching. You have a great month, and I will see you very, very soon. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.